The following is an Outdoor Channel original production. Get ready for some awesome mallard and teal hunting in the peak of the migration in southwest Missouri. Well, they come in low and fast. Ducks Unlimited Television, presented by One Main Financial. Any passionate waterfowler will tell you that when folks call and tell you that they're into the ducks, you do whatever you can to get there. Following a drought of ducks at a few of our scheduled stops on this year's duck tour, Mike Checkin and I decided to take advantage of the action while it's hot. So we got an invitation to come to Southwest Missouri in an area called Rich Hill to do a December duck hunt. Now I've deer hunted and I've gotten to turkey hunt in Missouri and I absolutely love the Midwest and Missouri is one of my favorite places to hunt. And when I've been here deer hunting before, I've seen all the waterfowl coming through and I've always wanted to come back here and duck hunt. I've got a lot of friends that live here and I've just heard about it over and over about how good it is. So I knew we would be ending up somewhere out here at some point and I've heard stories about Mark Dudenhofer's club in Rich Hill. Most of the time when you think of Missouri duck hunting, you're thinking Missouri River, uh, Mississippi River, northern Missouri. You know, there's some pretty good hunting down in the boot heel too, but a lot of people don't realize southwest Missouri has some pretty, pretty exceptional duck hunting too. So we were having a great shoot in uh, central Missouri up in the Brunswick Dalton Bottoms, and I get a phone call from a really good friend of mine from way back, a buddy of mine and his brother who I used to hunt with back in college, and he said, man, I've got some ducks. They're down here. You guys need to get down. You know, Missouri is one of those states that's lost over 90% of its waterfowl habitat with the channelization of the Missouri River and the Mississippi River. A lot of drainage due to agriculture, but it's really fun to come see some of these landowners who are reverting habitat back. You know, Mark and his partners and quite a few others now have clubs and habitat here that uh, they created for the benefit of waterfowl and for the opportunity to duck hunt and create some memories for their family and friends. So the first day, we got to hunt with Scott Storm. I mean, great artist. He's been the International Artist of the Year for Ducks Unlimited. He won the Federal Duck Stamp Competition in 2004. Artwork all over the place, classic representation of duck hunting. I mean, when you look at one of his paintings, you can feel that you were there. You can see those mallards, pintails, whatever he's painting, and get the feeling of, I was in that scene, I've seen it before. And a, what a great guy, great conservationist, duck hunter, and obviously a talented artist. So the reason I consider it such a privilege to get to meet and hunt with Scott Storm is the fact that this guy has won the Federal Duck Stamp Competition and he's Artist of the Year by Ducks Unlimited. That's the pinnacle in that venue. And it's very important not only for waterfowl hunting, but in hunting in general, because it's a, it's a positive attribute that is seen in the mainstream populations. And any chances we can have at that as hunters, we need. So to meet somebody that represents that and get to hunt with them, is a, it's a real honor on my part. Yeah, let's shoot these right here, right here, right here. Oh, nice. nice shooting. Nice. Beautiful. <laughs> Good Boom. duck action. What's yeah. up, bud? <laughs> Scott and Hotley with the double bang. Ducks Unlimited Television is brought to you by One Main Financial. Your needs, your goals, your dreams. We're in Rich Hill, Missouri on a last minute duck hunt with the Dudenhoffers. And also joining us is renowned waterfowl artist, Scott Storm. Scott just bagged a nice mallard, an artistic inspiration all its own. Look at the purple, look at the purple and the green in there. Yeah, it's got a little bit of everything, blues. Just depending on how the light hits yeah. it. Yeah, blue, green, purple. Yeah, that's beautiful, they are really colored up. From a painting standpoint, is it more challenging with these, or is it this is, a, is this an easier one to paint? I think you know because of the variety of feathers, 
that makes it easier to paint. Yeah. Because it gives you a little bit of lead, leeway on how, how to approach it. I actually paint them pretty monotone to start with, pretty black and white, and then I actually add fill them in layers, layers of, color of color over the top, and it can be just a little tweaking of cobalt blues to the yellows that you add to make that sheen happen. So it's not just taking that decoy and slapping some green paint on his head, huh? No, it really isn't. Growing up as a waterfowler, I have some great memories of, of sneaking through the woods in northern Minnesota with my dad and brother, uh, chasing wood ducks, mallards, and ringnecks. I, nowadays, I, I love duck hunting, but I also pull a camera over my back just as much as I bring my gun. So it's not all the shooting, it's the settings for me. It's ducks in different habitats, in the water, spring rituals different weather conditions, different scenery. So that, that always keeps it fresh for me. And and, um, and being involved with Ducks Unlimited, the more I am, just uh, the experiences, the friendships you make, the waterfall has it going on. So one of the neat conversations with Scott was about the federal duck stamp program. Scott won it, I believe, in 2004. The contest has been something that I've entered since 1991. I painted it in 2003, but uh, it was for the 2004 slash five um, license year. Since 1934, federal duck stamps have become a vital tool for wetland conservation. The federal duck stamp program has raised over $750 million and put 5.3 million acres of habitat on the ground, waterfowl habitat. It's an extremely efficient program. 98% of dollars raised with that program go into the ground for habitat conservation. The contests uh, from year to year asked for five different species and, and that particular year was the redhead. I painted a pair of redheads and the setting kind of lent itself to that. It, it just was one of those things that seemed right. I just love to be able to be out in the field, uh, whether it's duck hunting, deer hunting, yeah, pheasant hunting, you name it, and to um, capture it. From, from what I see, you know, it might, it might not be the, the best hunt. Um, I might not be on that day as far as shooting, but at least with, with a painting, I can make it look like I had the ducks in close or the pheasants. For me, it's kind of like writing a book. It, it may not be something that actually happens, but the setting was there, um, and it's, it's trying to create that dream and capture that, that image. Because of his artistic interest, the ducks have a strong ally in Scott. Over the years, DU's Artist of the Year program has raised in excess of $35 million for habitat conservation efforts. We wanted to get some more mallards, and we, we finally had some mallards coming in. The lone shoveler came in, which of course I had to shoot. Take him! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay, it was a shoveler drink. You know, Mark didn't really understand why I was trying to kill the shoveler, but it's kind of a joke between Chekhet and I. I shoot a shoveler in every location we go. I'm, the, I'm kind of the shoveler king for some reason. Actually, there's a ton of teal in this area. There's a ton of green winged teal um, and huge populations of mallards. The only downfall to our weather this morning is there's no wind. Uh, makes it a little more challenging. You gotta be very careful with the calling, uh, not to overcall, not to be too loud. Mark's a fantastic caller, and we're in his backyard. Um, he starts working birds immediately. I really didn't know much about Mark, but uh, getting to know him over just a few days hunting together, he's just a really tremendous guy. I was very, very impressed. He's a great hunter. Uh, he's been very, very successful in business, and, uh, and I, I, really, uh, I really admired him, you know, as far as he's a good family man, and he's put together a a great hunting club and it's just a, it was a real honor and a, and a privilege to get to, to hunt with him and to get to meet him and it's one of the things I really enjoy about uh, being a part of Ducks Unlimited and, and duck hunting in general is just the, uh, the camaraderie you get uh, from being a field and making new friends. Now early in the season one of our first hunts was a blue wing teal hunt down in the Garwood Prairie. Now here we are up in Missouri and my main focus has really been for mallards, but I love eating teal and shooting teal is a lot of fun and just watching the birds uh, work is really cool. Three drakes in there. Going to uh, well. All right, six o'clock. I'm sorry, not okay. six o'clock. Cutting back. Three drakes. 
Shoot that bird, shoot that bird. Yeah. Nice shot. Thank you. Nice shot, buddy. Boosh. Wish we could have gotten more of those down. <laughs> so I got to sit next to Scott Storm in the blind and burn his ear a little bit. I was really curious just about the, the whole process that goes into the federal duck stamp. You know, how long did it take him? Is where did he get the idea, the concept, or the photograph, or the image? And it's just is is really fascinating to listen to how much it means to him to be able to give something like that back to conservation. Every time I go in the field, I come away with some images that, that stand out. I, I just, with the duck hunting, I just love the way that the, the mallards come into to a set. You know, it, it makes you feel real well on several levels. And that's four. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed nobody was calling for that. Yeah, but I could hear the sh I could hear the I could hear the sound of butts on clothes and arts doing the things. I heard this. I used to go through the sky and I was like, oh. I heard this. <laughs> I've been hearing from my buddy Tim Dudenhofer, Mark's brother, about how great this little spot is that Mark's been developing uh, for five or six years now. I think Mark's had it for seven. So it was really exciting to get a chance to come back up here and uh, meet up with Mark and Tim. You know, we'd spent a lot of time hunting together back when we were in college and the years right after. And even with uh, Mark and Tim's dad, Augie, um, it, that's, it's sad that he wasn't here to enjoy us, but I'm sure he was watching from above and probably smiling as much as we were having fun reuniting in a duck blind. He just wanted more fun. It was more fun than catching twice. We're coming off just a picture perfect hunt the day before when we got to hunt with Scott Storm. And this next morning, there's four of us in the blind. There's Mark Dudenhofer, Tim Dudenhofer, Mike Checkin, and myself. And we get out there, the sun starts coming up. And I mean, you know, I took a picture with my phone and sent it to a bunch of my friends because I mean it was just like it, I, it's I still look at that when I'm traveling around I look at that morning and that sunrise coming up and I just thought it was one of those mornings where you're looking out there and you just really thank God you're alive. And once again you can see how well this place is managed you get there and the, I mean the blinds are all brushed in really well uh, placement of the blinds are just perfect uh, and this morning the activity though, we had a lot less mallards. We had more just, we had teal just all over us. And so we just started shooting teal. Shoot them. <laughs> and then we started realizing, you know, the teal are supposed to be our bonus birds. We're here, we're supposed to be shooting mallards. And that's what we really were focused on, but we just can't resist. But we're really inching our limits. So we all decided, let's stop shooting teal. Let's save our limits for the mallards. Nice. One of the funniest things I think about, and something that sticks out to me is, we were sitting there, and it's, you know, we've had some dead action, you know. Uh, we've had some downtime where just nothing was happening for, uh, you know, a couple of hours. And we kept saying, you know, if we could get a little wind and the sun would come out, it would get, you know, we'd get some action. Well, right after the clouds break and the sun comes out, <laughs> Tim's gun jammed and he was having trouble with it. So Mark said, well, give it to me. Let me see it. And Mark, right when Mark took it, he was messing with it. Bunch of ducks come in. We all jump up and we all shoot them. And Tim's over there. He's been sitting there waiting for couple hours for these clouds to break and the moment moment it happens he's sitting there we took his gun away from him and uh and shot him and it's, it was just kind of a 
you know, if, you know, knowing his sense of humor and, and sitting there with him all day is when I think back to it, it's funny. It's the things you remember on the hunt and the camaraderie, but uh, it, it still makes me laugh today. You know, when you hunt in a mid-latitude state like Missouri, you really live and die by the fronts that push new birds in and push the birds you have out. And we were, we were ready for some changes here because the weather was going to be crazy. It was going to go from cool temperatures to really warm, 50 degrees one night. And then we got the gambit of everything as that front came in, a little bit of rain, uh, clouds, then that cold air busted in here, clear skies, and the temperatures dropped within two hours. We're down below freezing. So with the wind chill, it's below zero today, and a lot of water's frozen up, and this actually bigger pond right here is open. And when we came in, several hundred ducks got up. So it's kind of a cool spot. Mark had a blind in mind, uh, and he had showed it to us before when we got there. And as we were getting there, there was a, there was a pond with a peninsula on it, and the, there was some open water there, and there were birds loafing there, and there was a lot of traffic just going back and forth. And we, kept, we started watching that, and we were heading to this other blind, and we decided, you know what? I mean, there's open water right there. There's birds right there. The birds want to be there. They are there. They're coming back and forth. Let's just go over there. You know, he told us there's a blind over there. He said, we haven't hunted that in a long time. I don't know what kind of condition it's in. We're hunting this old, this blind hasn't been hunted for years. Um, so it hasn't been brushed fresh or anything, but uh, because of everything iced up in this kind of situation, the birds were in here. We're lucky that there's no blind here, so I'm just trying to kind of rig it a little bit, get a little cover. So we get over there, and you know the blind, you know, it's not really brushed in, and uh, you can tell no one's really hunted in a while. The uh, the bigger problem is the blind only holds three people. Once again. We got Mark Dunoffer, Tim Dunoffer, Mike Checkett, and myself. So uh, somebody's got to go. Now, you know, I'm sitting there, I know they're not going to kick us out. We're filming a TV show. <laughs> so, you know, Mark kind of looks at Tim and he's just standing there. He's like, where do you want me to go? And Tim, you know, Mark said, you know, well, you just you walk around. He said, fine, 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 fine. He got out of there pretty quick. You no know, four wheel or anything. We just saw him walk off. and. We were, we were all kind of thinking he's probably not going to get into much action, you know, but he'll probably go sit up in the timber somewhere or, or maybe, you know, set up in some other water or maybe find a blind that's, you know, you know as he gets around the property. Ducks Unlimited Television is brought to you by One Main Financial. Your needs, your goals, your dreams. tell you this was classic Missouri weather, classic Missouri duck hunting. Uh, the old saying is if you don't like the weather right now wait 10 minutes because it's going to change and, and that's exactly what it did. We got the gambit of everything as that front came in, a little bit of rain, clouds, then that cold air busted in here, clear skies and the temperatures dropped within two hours. We're down below freezing and the next day snow and here we are in this arctic blast. But that's classic waterfowl hunting in Missouri. We need to shoot these right here. Ready? Shoot these. Quick out the break. It didn't take me long hunting with Mark to realize this guy is a total pro. Um, you know, he's put a lot of time and effort into uh, to this habitat and his club. He had an awesome lab, which, you know, when you get the opportunity to hunt with dogs like this that are very well trained, they're dialed in. Um, you know, that's, that makes, that's the other 50% of it, I think, just watching the dogs work. Uh, you know, the birds coming in and, you know, and, and actually getting to shoot and the whole setup, but then actually seeing the retrieves and having a really good dog work. Um, it just kind of makes, rounds up the whole package and he just had an awesome, awesome dog. In the last 20, 25 years, there's been quite a bit of work around here, both with the public lands 
in private lands, developing wetland habitat to benefit waterfowl. A little bit out. He's right here, right here in front, right here. In front. Shoot him. It was a real joy to meet up with Mark and see the excitement that he has for developing this property with his other partners and creating this uh, outstanding waterfowl oasis. Right up front. Low. Can't tell. Well, that was a good one to end on. Here, here come four. Or not. You know, once again, it, it goes to show you, you know, if you are where the ducks want to be, or you know, in any hunting situation, if you're where the animals want to be, but you know, if you're where the ducks want to be, that's the most important piece. And this was such a prime example of having success of just being where the birds want to be. Because here we are, we're sitting in a blind with very little cover. We've got the sun right in our face. It's terrible conditions for one, hunting and for filming. Because we're trying to film, you got the sun right in the camera. Uh, it's right in our eyes, and I mean, we're just lit up, um, you know, with no, no real uh, cover for us and we ended up living in and out. And just think about all the birds that we spooked, but we still had tons of action. And to my surprise, Tim Dudenhofer went off and walked around that property and ended up shooting a limit of ducks. So uh, all in all, even with the cold weather, um, you know, we thought maybe there wouldn't be any ducks there. It turned out being a bang up morning. And all in all, it was just a bang up, awesome, awesome Midwest duck hunt.